Welcome to stage two of the Apex Solo. This week we're going to prepare the main outer bag of your Apex Carry. We will start with preparing the main outer panels, so the stitched front to one side and the snap and loop front to the other side. We will add the hand straps and the toe straps and the little snap loop as well. We'll then fit the base and we will um, close the side seams of the outer bag and then box out the corners. So that'll be the main um, outer bag finished and then next week we will move on to tacking the lining. What we'll start first with is preparing the side triangles and the um, angle pocket. So let's get one angle pocket and one pair of side triangles. Um, they have the little notches marked on the side triangles so one goes there so I made sure to keep them in pairs and the other goes there. So the gray lines are running uh, parallel to each other. Um, okay, so first things first, I'm gonna press these in half. Okay, I'll come back to you. And there's the sun. Now, okay, so this one's gonna go over here. And this one's going to go here. My notches are just about visible. I was careful not to iron them off. Um, so I will be pinning that to that, that to that, and then I'm gonna base them in place on either side, okay? Okay, I remember to thread the machine, which I hadn't done when I changed the presser foot to my normal presser foot. Um, so what I'm going to do is make sure I have everything in the right place again. Yep, yeah, so I'll be basting this in place along here and basting that in place or tacking. I'm not sure what the correct technical term is. So I've lined up my notches here, the corner and my centre notches. And I'm gonna, I'm a fan of pins. I don't use clips all that often. The one thing when you're using pins is make sure you stay within the seam allowance because the pin will mark the uh, wax fabric. So I'll just pin, I just need a couple of pins. Now I'm going to get the, the lining and sew up. So that's one of my lining pieces. So the next thing I'm going to do is lay this on. This is, I'm going to do the stitched side first. So this is where I'm going to be using a simple stitched version uh, pocket for the outer. And then the second one, I'll do the, um, the snap strip, which I'll have to make as well. So, okay, get them all nicely lined up. Now, one thing I like to do, which is if I have a stiff fabric or stable fabric, and I'm sewing it to a less stable fabric, I've always found that it goes through better without moving around if I um, put the less stable fabric on the bottom. So I know I'm pinning it here now, but I'm gonna flip it upside down for a stitching. Um, find it goes through the machine better whatever the dog feet tend to grab and pull the, the, the less stable fabric along better from the underside okay so what I'm going to do is flip it over you can see my basting lines here I'm going to sew up and down with a one centimeter seam allowance here I'm, I'm going to be starting on that little Point there. If I'm off a tiny bit, it's not the end of the world, but that's what you're aiming for. Okay, when I get to more, yeah, and now lift and drop. Okay. 
Now, this is the bit that's a little bit tricky with the wax fabric because I'm not going to be able to press this. So if I press it, the wax from the fabric is going to come onto the, the, um, the lining. I'll often use line this outer pocket with wax fabric as well, but I really like this blue wax fabric and I don't want to waste it on lining that you're hardly ever going to see. Um, so I guess what I'll do is I'm going to finger press along this now just to help it press. I'm going to, so I can do it all here, I don't have to go away to the, the iron, which I guess is a good thing. And now, this is what I do when I am trying to turn a corner neatly. I'm going to fold that there first, okay? And I'm going to hold on to this, which I can do just about, I'd say. I'm going to get my finger right up into it. I'm hoping this is all visible for you guys. And I'm going to hold that as best I can as I turn it, and that'll help it turn into a, a really neat point. And I hope that glaring sun isn't affecting anything. Okay, so let's see how that goes. Now you can see straight away. That's a pretty neat point. Okay, and it'll be even better when it's all, all magically done. Oh, I like that. That's good, isn't it? It's not. It's not like super sharp, but it's very neat. And then pull all these up into place. That's looking pretty good already. So I'm going to be top stitching along here. I'll have to be careful to keep my lining pulled down because I haven't been able to press it into place so um i'll have to be careful when i'm top stitching that it doesn't slip out of line um i guess if it does a tiny bit it's not the end of the world but oh yeah that's looking pretty good isn't it guys really neat line you can see this quite strong creases i'm okay with that I'll probably crunch it up when you're birthing the bag, when we're turning the bag the right way out at the very end. It's going to get squished to death anyway. Um, so, yeah, that's looking really, really nice. Okay, so now I'm going to change my... I'm going to change my um, stitch length to about three. Tiny bit, tiny bit higher than three and try and get this to feed through evenly which hopefully it will do that for me so again i'm going to make sure i have my lining pulled just pulled away there so that it sits neatly and go for it so if i had an edge i have a load of different feet for this machine i've not used any of them before so i'm not going to try now so i'm just going to be eyeballing to keep it centered on that uh, this side of the foot and uh, try and keep it as even as I can. Now again just make sure your lining is sitting in behind where it should be. I find the place where it will sometimes sneak off course is here in behind the triangle. Uh, My automatic thread cutter. I love it. Lucky me, eh? Um, snip off the tiny extra bits. Yeah, that's pretty good, isn't it, guys? It's worked out pretty well. I kind of want to do the other one the exact same because I love the crisp neatness of, of the stitched pocket front. I really like it. I didn't interface again. I could have patched to interface to these and on the back where it's going to be stitched down. But this is good and robust fabric. I don't think I'm going to need it. But yeah, that's looking good. Okay, so we'll put that aside. And the next thing will be to prep the uh, snap strip. I accidentally cut out two snap strips, which I shouldn't have. So that's the front snap strip. And while I'm at it, I'll do the side snap strip because it's uh, the same process. So I'll do it together. Okay. Um, 
Okay, so first thing first, I'm gonna fold this back. I'm going to go through how I make the snap strips again. Um, so you take your it's pieces G1 or G2, and so the side snap strips are, are made in the same fashion. Um, you fold the long sides in toward the center, and if you're not using a waxed fabric, obviously you can press them uh, properly. Fold each side in toward the center, and then you will fold that in half. and mark that crease. So you just wanna make sure it's all nicely lined up already at the stage. So you're gonna mark that crease there, just pressing it here. And next, you're going to fold that at 90 degrees, which gives you a 45 degree angle there, with the that crease line lining up with the center there. So you that'll be marked, so you can press that. And then you open it, and you do the opposite. Okay, and you press that. So next you fold it back in half again. And using the crease lines that you've made, you're gonna fold in those little corners to make a point. That's it. Ready to top stitch all around the outside, which I've I have done correctly in the main tutorial. Okay. I have to say, I don't think I'm going to do a triangle uh, a pointed because this is really stiff fabric, and I think this is going to get too too bulky. So what I could do is this. Okay. that well, maybe I will maybe that'll so fine so what I'm gonna do is sew up and around I'm not convinced it's a good idea <laughs> will I do it sure I can always cut it again I have a spare one cut by accident so I can always do it again and just do a straight across that's quite stiff so we'll see how it goes I'm going to sew up and down again an edge stitching foot would be great but we'll manage without so what's tricky here is keeping these directly on top of each other and not letting them creep around again I'm going to use the edge of the five as my guideline back stitch going through my machine totally fine it's a good machine though I'm just gonna check yeah it's not bang on um, at the point but it's as close as it's gonna get and then I'll just adjust it again That's not bad. It's yeah, it's quite a bit of it's quite stiff. Yeah, that's I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so I think I'll do the exact same for the side snap strip because it is nice, pretty the having the um yeah, I like that. okay so that's my side snap strip and that is my main strip 
I'm going to do the side snap loop while I'm at it as well. Um, while I have the, the bit of fabric out for the, the correct thread in my machine. So, again, tiny folds to each other in the centre and then fold again. Now, it can be tricky feeding that through the machine. Sometimes I, sometimes I cut it longer so that it goes through. I don't know if I showed the camera that properly, but I folded it in and folded it again. And, uh, and then I'm gonna, I usually end up just sewing down the middle when it's that narrow. Um, it can be tricky to, So that's for later and this is going to go in my my next uh, front pocket so my angle pocket at the front so we need our lining our pocket and our two pieces so the first thing I'll be basting well first thing I'm going to go over and iron these um, and then I will come back to you Back again, out of the way. Back again with the um, side triangles. So one goes there, and the other will go there. I will line up the notches, that corner there, and that corner there, and the center notches. I'm going to baste them in place first. Now, see my two notches here? These are important, we'll talk about these in a minute. Um, first up, I'm gonna pin my lining in place. So what I'll do is I'm gonna put a pin, a double pin at this notch point so I don't forget. Because it wouldn't be like me just to sew past and not remember with it. my double pin at my notch. I don't always do that, but no harm. And sometimes I forget to stop. So what I'm going to be doing is sewing along with a, a stitch length of two centi two, two millimeters, I presume that means, I don't know. And, um, and then I will change to about three and a half for this section change to about three and a half for this section here so that I can get the stitch ripper out, rip it. I'll be back stitching here and back stitching here so that I can take out those stitches there and not be worried about it um, uh, coming undone. So I'm gonna slow down here to get these pins. My notch is just here. I'm going to sew up to there. Now I'm going to back stitch a couple of times. One, two. Okay, and I'm going to change my stitch length to about three and a half. That's centered, I think. Yep, yeah, it's not bad. And then I'm going to sew down again to this notch position with the three and a half. One more. Yeah. I'm going to change my stitch length to two. And then do a few back stitches. One, two, and then go back two. 
one. All right. Okay, so it's nice and secure there now, and I can keep stitching away. Now, so see there, those stitches are that little bit less, uh, a little bit wider. So I'm going to do the same process as before. I think I will finger press all along here just to help this sit. And now, same as before, we're going to fold the I don't know if it matters which side you fold it to, but um, I feel like that's really secure there, that really clean. So I'm going to do the same thing, I'm going to hold this junction here and turn it out. So I get my finger in there, my index finger's in there, my thumb stays where it is. And I'm going to pinch and hold and push that through. I really hope I've caught that correctly on the camera. So it'll be a little bit harder because the stitches are, are, are bigger and so it won't be holding it as tightly, but we can, because we'll be ripping the stitches out, um, we'll be able to. That's not bad anyway, is it? Worked out pretty well again, nice. real advantage of the wax canvas it really holds it's crisp lined isn't it okay so my stitch ripper which was given to me thank you very much by Roshi from Quilt and Stitch when I ordered one and then they realized they didn't have one have it in stock so she sent me one of her own so I'm going to really carefully rip the few stitches that are in this apex bit here The apex being kind of the top of a mountain or of a triangle or the apex of your career <laughs> the top of your career highest point naming patterns is really hard okay so so that's obviously secured in behind so i'm gonna i can't stitch it and yeah that's it all gone so I'll just pull that back a little bit and snip it off and then it's gone. So you can see there, the stitches are pretty secure. You want to be careful enough, but the stitches are pretty secure there. So what I'm going to do, wherever it is, there it is, is take mine out. There's usually a top and a bottom when you sew your bobbin thread stitching isn't usually as attractive looking as your top so that's the top so i want that to be facing down so that when i fold it over the top stitches are, are most visible i'm going to feed it in Ooh, that's cool um and i can't remember how much how far down I meant to go. So I will check the tutorial and come back and finish that. So, so our notch position is meant to be about two centimeters down from the top. So here are our, our snap position. And then we're meant to have 12 centimeters showing above. Okay, so that's about right. So I've got 12 there, so that'll do. So this is where I do use clips, let me get clips. Because I can't pin through this fabric, I will hold it with a clip and I will make sure that that is sitting, I'm making sure that that's sitting as perpendicular as I can, I can judge. And now I'm going to top stitch up and down, okay? I'm going to take off my clip. I'm just going to hold it in place. There we are. 
out. It's not too bad. Yeah, it's not quite at the apex, but it's as close as I'm going to get it, I think. So I'll kind of do it a slightly angled one to make sure of my... Okay, for now, I'm going to go down. So that's that and I will I think I will check my instructions but I get my snap snaps now and put my snaps in um, okay now my snaps tell you what this is my all just a basically a poke a very sharp pokey thing um, and that's what I make my holes that I put my snaps in with because if you use a hole puncher which I'll get one now to show you what that is if you use a hole puncher it's going to snip through a load of the threads which actually weakens the fabric um, but if you push through it you'll break fewer threads and uh, it can distort the fabric a little bit but i prefer that to having uh, a frayable loads of, of of threads cut so i'll show you what, what the other option so you can use that to punch your hole through but i don't like using that for snap fixings i much prefer using my awl so i'm going to check my measurement which Go by whatever the tutorial says. I think it's meant to be two centimeters. Um, so I'm gonna go with two centimeters there. Make my my mark, okay? So I know where I'm putting my. So I'm gonna poke right through. Careful not to stab my finger. See, what that's doing there is, it's gonna break a few threads, but it's pushing most of the threads out of the way instead of cutting through all of those threads. So I think it's a much better, so you wanna make it big enough that that's gonna fit through. So as you can see, it can distort it a bit. Um, you can see it's stronger here. See the way there's very few threads actually broken. They've just been pushed through. So it'll go through from the other side as well, which I find helps. Okay, let's see where that fits through. Yeah. Then. And I'm going to check my tutorial again because I can't remember what I meant to do. <laughs> I think it's six centimeters from there to there, but let me check. So yeah, that's meant to be six centimeters from there to there. So just check what that looks like. So that'll have the piece sitting just there like that. Yep, and that's about right. Feel free to do what you, well, that's about right. Let's don't say feel free to do anything. Of course you can. Okay, so same, marking with my awl. And I'm gonna make sure that it's as centered. It looks pretty good to me. Through. I'm going to change my so yeah, the male part goes on there, the female part on this side, and um, a nice flat snap on the top. So that goes there, that goes there. Okay, and then check that. So I got those from Zipper Zoo. 
so you'll know by now that I like Zipazoo. VK is always so nice and helpful and friendly. And they've got a great range of stuff. Perfect. That feels good and secure. Love it. Okay, so that's that done. So the next stage will be attaching these to the outer, main outer, attaching the base, and then doing the snap loop bits at the top. So I don't know how good an idea this is. It's quite stiff fabric. Um, I don't know if it's going to, but I folded it in half and then folded the sides in again. And now I'm going to try and hold that while I stitch it, but it doesn't really want to fold that small because it's so thick. Um, let's see how I get on. My stitch length is at about three. Let's top stitch in. And go slowly. pretty nicely didn't it okay perfect um obviously i changed bobbin thread i oh, sorry i changed thread yeah full stop uh gotta have matching thread right i'm a big fan of matching thread for top stitching uh, it's so much more forgiving of little wavers in your stitching than uh, a contrast thread so you're very brave you go for contrast thread so that's ready for when i've been um, ready to do my straps and loops and all that but now we're going to get the um, prepare the edges both both outer uh, panels attach the base. Okay, so let's do this one first. Okay. First up, I will be lining these up. Now, I've got this notch here, which is where your top triangle, the top of your side triangles should meet, okay? It is great if this point here and this point here line up along the seam and um, honestly if it's a little bit off it doesn't matter you listen we all love that feeling of getting the seams to to line bang bang on to line up bang on but um it kind of in every version i've made even if it's not perfect it still looks really well so um don't be too hard on yourself if it doesn't line up I won't be hard, too hard myself if it doesn't line up either. So not in place. As you can see, that notch there or that lot, that mark there, and I, we're quite a bit off there. So let me see. Put it down a little bit more. It's not that much off. Could be grand. They're both, see that they're both hanging off a tiny bit? I think that's okay. It's better that they're all lined up properly um, and evenly than it is that they're all bang on. So I'm going to split the difference and see. I'll show you from the other angle. And I'll just take that into account when I'm sewing my other set as well, my other side. And hopefully they're off by the same amount. So what I was telling you is that I'm a little bit off there. And I'm a little bit off there. It's just the way the angles have kind of, when it, it's sewn it, it wasn't bang on obviously. It wasn't perfect, but I think that's okay. We'll take it into account when um, we're sewing the other side as well. Okay, so just 
So I'm going to baste along here to hold it in place. Baste along here to hold it in place. And then I will be changing thread again to stitch down the centre. Next thing I'm going to do is change back to my blues top stitching thread and I'm going to stitch down the center. You saw I used the crease when I was cutting it out, it's more or less bang on. Um, so I'll be able to use that as a guide. What I'll do is I will get my um, my Hera type tool, it's not exactly a Hera tool but it's similar. Can't find my Hera tool. So I'm going to use a butter knife, the blunt side of a butter knife, and I will kind of mark a line straight down to the centre. Okay, I'll stitch along that. Okay, but let me change my um, thread first. So again, I have the problem that I can't pin through um, the oil skin without marking it. So I'm going to put one pin along the line. Mm, maybe I shouldn't even bother that. I'm just going to do no pins. And just one pin down here. I'm going to start from the top. And we'll see how we get on. Now I like to back stitch, back stitch, and that's enough to secure it. Um, you can see that's off a bit there at the bottom. I'm not going to worry too much about it. I can't really pull that through, so I will get a needle. That's the perfect spot for a bar tack or an extra set of hand stitching. Maybe I'll do that. What's that? Nice neat stitch down the bottom, down the middle. And next up is this bad boy. So I'm going to tack along the <coughs> sides of that. So this lined up a lot better, but I wanted to mimic, or to match what happened here. So I pulled it down a little bit. So base down the two sides. Hopefully the contrast isn't too bad there with that sun. Okay, that's done. So the next thing we're going to do is find the centre notches. I don't know if there's a, it's not really a right side or a wrong side to this fabric. So find the centre notches with right sides together, sew on there, fold over, top stitch, and then add the other side. 
Okay, next we will prepare our straps. So these are going to be my hand straps and toad straps. I'm going to cut 28 centimeters long for those and 75 centimeters long for those. So let's do that. And 75. 75, which is so 28 centimeters is 11 inches, and 75 is 29 and a half inches. Okay, so first up, we'll attach the hand straps. So we have our two sets of hand straps, our two in front and our back. So let's start here. And we're going to take the hand straps and attach them with two centimeter overhang. to make sure they're nice and perpendicular. Um, we'll base them in place. So that's one set done. So that means there is two centimeters. So when you fold that down with the seam, when the seam allowance is sewn in, you've got three centimeters there. Which you can fix a little rivet in, or uh, just a simple line of stitching, or a square of stitching, or you can just leave it and top stitch around. I've found that to be pretty sturdy. Then the next stage is if you are using a snap loop, you're going to be fixing your snap loop piece in here. So where is my snap loop? I'm going to keep that out of the way or just ignore it <laughs> best I can. Quite a stiff snap loop because of the fabric I've used. So you just want to... Now this is definitely a job for clips, isn't it? So you just clip it in place, roughly. That's pretty good. It's not pulling down too hard. I think that looks very good. Yep. Yeah. So I'm going to again stitch across. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? And the last are our hand straps, our toad straps. Similarly, I'm going to position them in line like that. one at a time I think. Keeping them 
nice and perpendicular to the top, so nice right angle. And we'll do the other side. Toad straps to the other side. Yep. So that's great. So the next thing we're going to do, which is Touch the base. So the next thing we're going to do, which is attach the base, we're going to line up the center notches and sew it on there with a one centimeter seam allowance, flip it over, and then top stitch, and then repeat it the other side. I said I don't use pin or clips very often, but they're kind of handy too, aren't they? So one centimeter, three eighth inch seam allowance. And starting just at the edge of the fabric. Okay. That's that so that advantage of oil skin is I can just flip and perfect. I'm going to top stitch along here. and we'll do the same line up the center notches center notches lined up really starting to take shape it's great okay so the next thing we're going to do is the bag right sides together so what we want to do is make sure that these points are lined up so these points here and this point here and if the others are out by a couple of mil the top and the bottom that's not a big deal centimeter seam allowance we're going to sew right down there I've sewn down with the one centimeter seam allowance if you need to hand crank here do like this machine god bless its soul is brilliant and just goes through without a problem but it is a good few layers of fabric there some of them might be quite stiff, you might need to hand crank, so take take your time if you need to. Um, I'm gonna open this up now and show you the, what it looks like here. See how well it's lined up, hopefully it's quite good. So yeah, that's pretty much bang on. Now look, if I pull this apart, I can just see a few blue threads, but it's good and tight, it's not really a problem. And here, that's not bad either. 
it's not perfect but it's not bad and again if when you get here and these threads look kind of loose because there's so much fabric and there's so much thickness here's a tip of something you do it's not really necessary here because it's all holding itself really nicely but if you sew at that seam allowance okay along this joint here just a fraction inside it and reinforce that with a line of stitching just the tiniest bit inside it that'll make a huge difference i can't illustrate it very well here because it's holding it's 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 holding together very nicely but if you just literally uh, like one millimeter or so on like a, a tiny little bit inside like one sixteenth of an inch or less Just doing that will be enough to help give extra strength to the main line of stitching and hold it all together really nicely. Um, as I said, it's, and it also means you can still press your seams out and it's not having a huge impact on uh, the ability of your seams to be, to be pressed out. Right? Um, so yeah, it's, it's pretty tight. You can't see any of the stitching there anyway. It's not bang on, but it's, good enough okay that's pretty much perfect okay so I'm going to stitch the other side now as well So you can see there, see the way that the stitching is kind of open a little bit there. So I'm going to reinforce that joint. So there's the tiniest extra bit in there. And now when I open it out, hopefully this worked, and you'll see that, yeah, it's just held together that bit more tightly. Perfect. So I am going to finger press these open and I think I will go over to the iron and press open the top bit. Obviously not with the, the waxed fabric, I won't, but a good finger press will help that anyway. Okay. So I've pressed open the seams, I've stayed away from there because I don't want the wax to um, melt and stain the fabric. Um, but, yeah. So the next thing we're going to do is box out these corners. So we've got, I'm going to line up the centre notch with the, the centre notch with the stitches here, which I hope is in focus. Yeah, centered out with the stitches and stitch across here. I'll pin it first and then I'll talk about handling these corners. Okay, so we've lined up the center notch with these press nice and flat. And now, what's important here is not so much that you stitch with a 12 mil or 15 mil seam allowance or whatever you need what you need to do is stitch enough that you get past the stitching here so that you're coming in underneath the stitching here when you're you're stitching along so you basically need to start from about here come across to about here and that's the most important thing and we can always go if, we, if, if it's not caught right we can always stitch it again uh, going a little bit further out that's not going to have any major impact on, on anything uh, so let's, let's try that 
So this is about a 15 mil seam allowance. So there, let's turn it out and see what that looks like and then we'll do the other side. This is hard work. So I just went to check the video <laughs> and lo and behold, it hadn't recorded me sewing the corners. So I'm just going to go through it with you. Um, it's pretty straightforward, but I'll go through the points that I made again, even though it's already sewn. So <laughs> what I did was obviously pulled these out pull these seams out here, make sure that was sitting flat. And I sewed along here with roughly a one and a half centimeter seam allowance. And I made the point that what's most important is that you make sure you're, you're gonna catch your outside of these seams and the bulk of the seam there, the bulk of the, the corner. So that's what determined my seam allowance. So if it needs to be 1.6, or if 1.2 is fine, that's okay. Um, but basically I sewed along, starting from that very point there, so down, back stitching a good bit of both ends to make sure that corner is nice and stiff. And I turned it around and I did the same, back stitching at the corners. This was a slightly bigger seam allowance here just because the way it all sat. Okay, but it was inside those and inside the bulk that seam which kind of continues to about there okay then I turned it out and it was perfect and I checked my video and it hadn't recorded shouldn't will that's that with that all done so you can see those corners are so the stitching goes a little bit past absolutely fine a little bit past that line of stitching will hold your base nice and neatly straight and flat. Just gives it an edge. Just check, I usually check at this stage for any loose threads that are in my seam line so that I can pull them out from the inside as needed. They're all fine. Yep. Right, it's looking great. Let's tackle them. It's looking great. Let's tackle the lining. That is stage two of the Apex Sew Along done. Um, the outer bag is now prepared. And so next week in stage three, we will move on to making the lining of your Apex carry.